All right, welcome to a great day, everybody. At 9 a.m., Scott Haney. And I'm Nicole Nalepa. Hey, we saw the first flakes of our season in the state this morning. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> this video was posted on X just before 7 a.m. by Norfolk's public information officer, John Barbagallo. We love John Barbagallo's videos, but when he starts really posting these things, we know the winter's on its way. Winter is on its way, right? Just some gentle uh, sticking to the grassy surfaces, but not to the roads, which is some good news. All right, let's take a look at uh, your first alert live radar. It is showing some blues up there in parts of northwest Connecticut and now northeast Connecticut. Staffordville and Union picking up a couple of flakes, but uh, areas like Bark Hampstead and Colebrook and Norfolk and Sharon and Kent. Uh, you guys are dealing with a little bit of snowflake action right now, but just some rain in other parts of the state. It's uh, fairly light rain at this point, so we'll keep you posted if that uh, changes. According to First Alert Futurecast, it kind of just fizzles at by one o'clock and we actually, Nicole, we might see some partial clearing by later on this afternoon, which would be awesome. And then tonight, clear skies, the temperatures drop, and we're talking about a first alert for a hard freeze tomorrow morning. So for the rest of today, look at the temperatures. Only in the mid to upper 40s. Oh, my word. The normal high for this time of year is 57. And your three-day forecast includes, again, isolated rain and snow showers. Uh, temperatures get a little bit better tomorrow after that hard freeze with temperatures in the low to mid to upper 20s tomorrow morning. Uh, low 30s along the shoreline. And then Friday is going to be a milder day with temperatures in the upper 50s. And the weekend at this point looks pretty good with temperatures near 60. So that's something to look forward to. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that while we try and get out of these cold temperatures. I know, right? Um, Health care workers are going to be rallying at the state capitol today for better protection and security on the job after the brutal murder of a visiting nurse over the weekend. Joyce Grayson was killed in Willimantic while visiting a client in a transitional home. Now, lawmakers recently passed a law to better protect health care workers in hospitals following an alarming uptick in violence. But now workers want more done for people outside hospital settings. Police say the suspect, registered sex offender 38-year-old, Old Michael Reese was arrested while carrying some of Grayson's belongings. So the rally is set for 2 o'clock today and everyone is invited to attend. It's, unfor it's an unfortunate story. Just very upsetting. It is unfortunate and it'll be interesting to see if any protection, you know, there's yeah, an increase go. in it. Yeah. So, in and I, I like how they're inviting everybody to the rally, mm -hmm. which is really nice. It's important. Our health care workers, they do so much for us. So much for us. All right, Canton schools are in the, the, a little bit of a delay this morning, right? Yeah, two hours late and this is all because of a bomb threat. The superintendent says it's related to a swatting incident that actually happened yesterday. Police are in the process of searching all of the schools in the town after that threat was called in yesterday yesterday evening. There was a fake threat called in about the schools that prompted lockdowns as well yesterday morning. The middle and high schools will start at 930. Canton Intermediate will start uh, the day at 10 o'clock this morning and Cherry Brook Primary School starts at 1030. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you any new information as it comes out on the air and, of course, on the Channel 3 app. All right, if you live here in Connecticut, you know that we have bears, and you've probably seen one or at least seen video of them. Two went by my kitchen window about two months ago. Wow. In the West End of Hartford. I was just going to say, <laughs> two years like, ago, boo -boo. not in Canton. I was like, hey, boo boo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, well, just how many bears are in our state? I know. I, I know there are at least two because I saw them. <laughs> and where are they? Patricia Del Rio went looking for answers. Take a look. Black bears in our pools, on our trampolines, and on our decks. Social media is filled with Connecticut bear videos. And if you think you're seeing more bears than ever, you would be right. Department of Energy and Environmental Protection bear biologist Jason Hawley says their numbers in the nutmeg state have exploded in the past two decades. 20 years ago, our population estimate was about 250 bears. And now the numbers are four or five times that. I would estimate somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300. Holly and his team are able to track the bear population primarily through tagging. Eyewitness News accompanied deep years ago as they visited bear dens during springtime. This is when the two-month-old cubs and their mom are still hibernating. The methods used then are the same today. She's a pretty young bear, we think. We just captured her this past summer. They may look like hunters, but they're state bear biologists, giving us a rare behind-the-scenes look at how they collect information about the bears. They mix a sedative that will make the mama bear groggy, but not completely unconscious. Once sedated, they run tests on her and keep her cubs warm while mom gets examined. I mean, she's licking a little bit, and she's got some reaction in her eyes. So that's, I mean, she's not fully under the drug. The cubs are weighed 225. 
and smeared with Vicks Vapor Rub to mask our human scent. They returned to their den exactly as it's found, and they returned to nestling with mom. Sometimes, we, I mean, they do this. We just got to tuck them back in there. Biologists are led to the bears with these collars. It's the female bears who are collared because the head and neck of the male bears are too big to fit them. This is a GPS radio collar that we have on. We probably have about 30 bears radio collared in Connecticut. A receiver then picks up transmissions from the collars. This antenna is pointed at that collar and it's picking up that collar's beep. And each collar has a different frequency, so we could, uh, so each bear has a different frequency. Bears at a greater distance can be tranquilized with a dart gun, shown here using a plastic target bear. Another way to tag bears is with this tube-like device. It captures the bear using food as bait. Primarily, we're using donuts in there. Bears are, you know, they have a very strong sense of smell, so anything sweet, that's what brings them to the trap. And when they pull, it releases the trigger. The bears are then tranquilized using a jab stick. We push and inject the drug into the bear. Um, it's not very traumatic for the bear. Very often they don't even notice that it happened. So where do bears live anyway? Where are their dens? Did you know that this oak tree would make a perfect den inside for a mama bear and her cubs? We'll talk about dens and where bears live coming up tomorrow night on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Well, coming up tomorrow, how bears are getting ready for winter thanks to your bird feeders, your grills, and especially your trash. <laughs> Patricia Del Rio is going to show us just how big they can get to when it's easier to find food. This is such an amazing series. Patricia's doing such, such an amazing job. job. I and, love it. And it's so important, you know. Just a little bear. I wow. know. They're so, so sweet. <laughs> yes, yeah, please do not pet a bear if yeah, you exactly. are coming into. Uh, What's your closest encounter? Growing up in the Berkshires, oh, yeah. we had bears Every, all the time. Yeah, all the time. They were just like our neighbors, basically. Okay. We lived right off of the Appalachian Trail. There were three in my house. One said something In your about, house? Yeah, some said, one said it's, the bed was too small. One said the bed was too big. Were you the blonde? I was the blonde, yeah. <laughs> Did you, was your porridge hot or cold? <laughs> it was cold. <laughs>